Okay. All right. Okay. I know you guys are enjoying talking about anime, but we got to get into some serious... Anime discussion can stop right now. I'm just kidding. You guys do whatever you want. Welcome to Japanese from Zero. This is lesson 12, and I've got to tell you, I am more excited about this lesson than any lesson we've done so far. Because really, in the entire book, this is the one lesson that pulls everything you have learned together. It's For me, it's the payoff lesson. It's like, okay, we learned this really, really mundane stuff. If you think about it, like, where is it? When is it? What day of the week? What month? What color? It's very basic stuff. But now, once you apply it to verbs, you can do so much more with it. A lot of times, books lead with verbs. And then you're then the really simple stuff you have to figure out after you've gotten into the complicated stuff. I kind of wanted to switch it around. I thought verbs first, too much. Let's get the basics down so that when we get to the verbs, power. We're going to do basic Japanese verb conjugation in this lesson. And I assume you've already been through the lesson, and this is a review, hopefully. This is lesson 12. And by the way, you got to know hiragana. You now. I'm so excited. I get so excited at this point. You guys know hiragana. And I, this isn't fake. Like, when I was making the PowerPoint, I was just thinking, like, you know, because I've never done, we hadn't done a series like this before where we took the book out. But it's like, you know, when I used to teach the classes, it was this this lesson that got me. It's like, they got it. This is basic. You, you can now say after this lesson, I speak some Japanese. I got basic conversation. I'm not great yet, but I'm working on it. And you have to know here. And you know, and I know how to write one of the writing systems completely. I know all of the hiragana. So we're going to learn just four verbs. Just four. But with those four verbs, we're going to lay down rules that you will use for the rest of your Japanese life. Maybe maybe you will marry a Japanese woman or a Japanese man and your kids will know Japanese and this will be something that this is the day that you learn it. Okay? Iku. Iku means to go. Iku. Okay? Kuru. Kuru means to come. Iku and kuru. You're going to use these all the time. To return. Also to return home. This is more often return home that there's another return that we'll learn later on, but this is return home, okay? And, uh, oh, I didn't even say it. It's kaeru, 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 okay? And to understand, we already know this. We already know sentences with it. We know, wakarimasu ka? Ie wakarimasu. And we learned that way back in the phrases part uh, of the lessons. So, wakaru is to understand. Now, let's take a moment. I know this is going to be a little bit hard to see, uh, maybe on the screen. So open up your book. It, you could, if you want to go to the quick spot, go to the last page. Right around the last page, we have this this chart right here. Okay. So what we're doing is anyone, and if you don't have the book or you're not on the website, go find a chart. Oh, go to hiraganaposter.com. I made that website. I don't promote it anywhere, but it's the entire hiragana chart, and you can click everything for sounds and everything. Okay. So go to hiraganaposter.com. Check it out. All right. So what you see on this chart is we have forms on this chart. So we know that we we know the hiragana now. And by the way, that's another reason why, another reason that I did not put any verbs before you know the hiragana is we're gonna use hiragana. We, we're gonna use hiragana to conjugate verbs. And a lot of Japanese people don't even realize that the hiragana chart is like a master guide to verb conjugation sometimes, like in some respects, okay? Now, we, obviously we can't do them all today because we're learning basic stuff. But they have five forms. We've got a, e, u, e, o. Every hiragana set that we've learned follows that pattern of a, e, u, e, o. We got kaki, ku, ke, ko, sashi, su, se, so, tachi, tsu, te, to, akasata, na, nani, nu, ne, no, akasata, na, ma, mami, mu, me, mo, akasata, na, ma, ha, ha, hi, hu, he, ho. Papi bubebo, papi pupepo, akasata na ha, ma. La. I'm just going through the order because that's how you remember. That's how you know what's next, right? That's Japanese alphabetical order, by the way. Akasata na ha ma yara wa. That's the order, okay? And we know them all now. But every one of those five in a row that we just did, they all are just a i u e o. So we call anything that has the a sound, we call it a form. Anything with the e sound, e form, and so on. Okay, a form, e form, o form, u form, f form. Got the, I got the order wrong, okay? Now, 
every verb in Japanese. There's a, I've got books with, with 500 verbs somewhere. Every verb in Japanese, without fail, if it's in the dictionary, the dictionary form ends in an U form. I'm going to randomly look at the chart, okay? I'm going to open up the book so I don't have to turn my head around, okay? I'm going to look at this chart, and we only know four verbs right now. We know iku, kuru, wakaru, and kaeru. And they all end in ru, except for ku, right? Iku is, is one. But let me give you, so we have a, i, u, e, o. There's a verb to buy, kau. Kaku, to write. Oyogu, to swim. Korosu, to kill. Zu doesn't have one. Utsu, to shoot. Zu doesn't have one. Shinu, to die. Fu doesn't have one. Hakobu, to move. Yomu, to read. And all those ru verbs that we just did. Any verb can end in an u form, and all of them end in an u form, okay? Once you know that, we can start building rules on top of that. So, I'm going to give you a pattern to, con to conjugate verbs into the various forms, and the way you do it is change the final u form to the e form. Okay? For example, wakaru becomes wakari. Kaeru becomes kaeri. Iku becomes iki. Now, I want to point out before we move forward, we are talking about something called regular verbs. In book two, lesson one, we'll learn a different type of verb where the rule is a little bit different. There are different rules for the types of verbs. There are four types of verbs, okay? Mm, there's five types of verbs, but mainly there's gonna be four, okay? So, wakaru becomes wakari, kaeru becomes kaeri, and iku becomes iki, and then, once we have that, by the way, the e form is the polite, the polite conjugation, okay? Then you add your endings. So these are the endings that will determine, by the way, in the book, in the current book right now, I don't know what it is when you, when you, what book you guys have or when the website got updated, but as of the making of this video, I call them stems in the book. That's, that was my logic back then. I thought it was a, felt like a stem, but a stem is really the first part, right? The wakari is the stem. These are the endings, the verb endings, okay? So the first one is mas, will do or do do. So this is future and presently I do this thing form. Masen, won't do in the future and don't do right now. Mashita, not mashita, right? Just like asta and just like uh, deshita, it's mashita, did, okay? And masen deshita, which is didn't, okay? Past tense negative. Now, all you do is add those to the E form of the verb and your verb has been conjugated. So for example, wakarimasu, kaerimasu, ikimasu, okay? You can see that all four of these, and by the way, we will learn more stems as the book goes on, as the lessons go on, we'll learn all sorts of stems, we'll learn what, we'll learn what, off form plus something does something. We'll learn more things, but it's gonna be at a pace that you can remember it, okay? So don't try to go too fast or you're gonna blow out. I've seen it. Over all the years I talked, there was this one guy came in, coincidentally his name was, I was gonna say George, but actually it was Stefano. A guy named Stefano came in and he was slated to be in the level one class. And he said, George, I wanna be in the level five class because I had a level five class running. I said, dude, you, you can't compress five books like that. But you know what? I gave him all the books that we had at the time, they were like handmade books. And he did them all. He got through it all and he was, I thought he was doing really well. I was really impressed that he got through everything in like a, like a couple weeks and he joined into that level five class, but he quit a month later. He was exhausted and he didn't have a fundamental grasp. He had enough of it in his sort of short term memory, but he didn't, he didn't keep it in because you've got to build it. Oh, you got to have a little bit of time. You can't learn a language in a month. Honestly, my Korean's good now, but it took me four years. It didn't take me one year and I was amazing. All right. So we have the base now of wakari to understand, and we're gonna go through them, right? Wakarimasu means I understand. Wakarimasen, I don't understand. Wakarimashita means I got it. I have understood, I understood, okay? So a lot of times Japanese people just say, wakarimashita, hai, hai wakarimashita, hai wakarimashita. That means understood, understood, understood. They heard what you said and they understood what you meant. Okay? Wakarimasen deshita. 
I didn't understand. Wakarimasen deshita. Uh, what happened? There we go. So we have now. Oops, I jumped up. What is happening? There we go. Okay. Kaeru, to return home. Kaerimas. You can say that on the phone to your wife. Kaerimas. I'm going to go home now. I will return home. I'm returning. Okay? Kaerimasen. Oh, gosh, if you said that to your wife, what happened? I'm not returning home. Kaerimasen. You're talking on the phone. Uh, tell your friend, hey, I, I, I got home now. Kaerimasen. I have returned. Kaerimasen. I have returned. Okay? I didn't return home. I didn't return. Kaerimasen deshita. Kaerimasen deshita. Felt like it wasn't moving for a second. All right. So now we have... You know what? I, I meant to do this way. So let's ignore this for a second. I got the... I, I edited the wrong one. So this is come. Uh, not come. This is go. Iku. Just to ignore that part, okay? So, ikimas. You can say different. Hey, are you coming tomorrow? Yeah, ikimas. I will go. Okay, ikimas. Ikimasen. I won't go. Ikimashita. I went. Ikimasen deshita. Now we'll go back to kuru. Okay. So kuru, the la the first three verbs that we just did are regular verbs. That means they follow the pattern of last hiragana changes to e form plus stem. Kuru is one of only two, perhaps three, irregular verbs in Japanese. They are irregular because they don't follow the rule. So you just have to memorize that kuru becomes ki for the key form, for the e form. You just have to memorize it. So once you have that, then it follows all the rules. So kimas is I will come. Kimasen, I'm not gonna come. Uh, kimashita, I didn't come. And kimasen deshita. You can only use this, of course, when you're at a place, okay? So, I thought I had some examples. No examples yet. Next section will have examples, okay? So go to the next, the next, we have to learn some things. Right? I'm just gonna give you a little bit of what's happening. We have to learn more things to use these verbs. We have to learn two more particles. Once we have those particles, we, we can do more with what we did. That's gonna be the amazing lesson. I thought it was this one, I'm sorry. It's the next one. After you know what to do with verbs and we apply what we're getting ready to do in this next time and location particle, you are going to, all of a sudden, light bulbs. Let's get to it. I'll see you in a second in the next video. Johnny.